Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Well, Emma Newman is here. I've been thinking a lot of whether I should make this video or not because nobody seems to talk about this. That's not a common topic to teach and yet so many students will struggle with this without real understanding what is going on with them. So it's time finally when I'm inspired to pull this video all together and present it to you. So we're going to talk about the reason of the following symptoms while practicing piano. You would feel blurry, intense, flat, mm, a very unpleasant sensation, almost like a blockage. And more you try to escape from this state, more you feel you're trapped. And you don't know the reasons. You start blaming yourself, you feel guilt, you're not inspired to practice anymore. Practicing is simply torturing for you. And you try more, you practice more, you push yourself more, feeling that you still are good enough and kind of squeezing and hating yourself for feeling what you feel. So if any of this is familiar to you, then this video might help. Let me clarify first uh, that when I'm saying anger, I also refer to being uh, upset, frustrated, intense, um, sore, uptight, bitter, impatient, restless, annoyed, irritated, and of course offended and resentful. And when those uncomfortable sensations um, appear while practicing piano, that's a sign of suppressed anger. Because what happens is when we don't allow anger out, the anger doesn't go away. Instead, it would be redirected to ourselves subconsciously and will be expressed through everything we think or do. And because the energy of anger is so powerful, especially when it's suppressed, then when it's redirected to us, it completely blocks out all our natural feelings. So when we feel, we feel there is natural, no natural flow, nothing comes with ease, we feel stuck, um, we cannot play or sing or imagine anything in the right way. And again, we try more, we push ourselves more, um, we, we feel more suppressed feelings and we feel less and less natural flow of creativity. So, since suppressed anger seems to prevent us from progress, we have to find a way to let it out. Um, in an appropriate way, of course. <laughs> so let's take a look how to do this. Well, where to start? <laughs> okay, at first, we have thousands of reasons to be angry. We don't get good results after daily of practicing. Uh, our teachers or even parents would blame us for not having good results, not necessarily in a clear verbal form, but we would always have this um, blurry sensation of feeling guilty, feeling being small and suppressed when we're around those people. 
We are simply forced to do what we don't want to do. We have to practice when we don't want to practice. We have to be at the stage which we are really afraid of. And uh, we simply need to attend some events that we don't even want to be at. And last but not least, someone may say something to us not really pleasant to hear. <laughs> and um, if we don't like it, he would blame us for this and treating us with no sensitivity and no kindness. So, the anger would be the most natural reaction to all of this. Yet, because we are taught in our society that feeling anger is not appropriate, we suppress this anger, we pretend we don't feel it, we um, eventually really stop feeling it. And we believe that we are good, appropriate fellows. While inside of us there is a hell, we feel pain of awful feeling of being uh, frozen, blocked, not ourselves, that drives us nuts, that makes us believe that something is profoundly wrong with us. And sure thing, we would also blame ourselves for feeling what we feel. Because the truth of the matter is, when we don't express anger right away, this energy will be expressed subconsciously in a more painful way. It's a never-ending, blurry sensation, wall, blockage, call it whatever, that doesn't let us be ourselves, that doesn't let us feel natural flow of our feelings. Now let me tell you a very trivial thing here, but it's so, so true. Feeling themselves are the most beautiful thing that we can experience in this life. Just like minors or dissonances in music that we play. But it becomes the most painful thing when we try to control, suppress and resist our feelings. It's like we're trying to fight with something much greater than us. Because we cannot stop feel what we feel. Because we cannot unwant what we want. All right, second thing. Second thing is that suppressing anger is very unhealthy. Because when we don't allow our anger, we're no longer setting up those healthy boundaries for people. And because we don't really recognize it, we would subconsciously blame ourselves and again um, direct the anger to ourselves about this. And it's very unhealthy because if we continue this way, then every time people hurt us, we would blame ourselves for feeling bad and hurt. We would direct the anger towards ourselves instead of them, instead of seeing clearly who they are and what are their real intentions. That simple. And a simple example of such case is when parents would start living their life and dream through their poor children. And when teachers quite often would push their little pupils to win competitions to raise their own reputation. Third thing, when I'm saying that we need to express our anger, I don't mean that we need to go on the street and punch and kick every person around us and breaking everything around us. That is also like an extreme way of expressing suppressed anger, but like another level. So what I mean is that we simply need to clearly see and know what is happening within us without blaming ourselves and without blaming others. We do not have to blame other people or try to change people because we can't. All we need to do is, if possible, go away. If not, then just stay there, be there, 
be sad about it, experience anger as many times as needed. Because even though it's a very unpleasant and disturbing feeling, it's there. And it's there for our own emotional growth. It's very helpful to understand that anger is just an energy. It's a very powerful, strong and burning sensation, but it's just it. And um, you may just sit and lay down, just experiencing it, without blame, without guilt, without judgment. And at some point you might find yourself wanting to cry or release this energy somehow, and then just take the pillow, punch it, yell in it. And by the way, I can assure you, it's so safe and so quiet that even if you yell very extremely loud, then people in, in, a, in another room cannot hear you at all. So it's a very great tool of releasing your tension. And after that you might feel some headache, but it's just a sign of releasing the tension, it's, it's quite healthy. <laughs> after that, for some days, you will experience profound, natural peace, calmness, stillness. You will feel that everything is coming back to you, your creativity, your inspiration, and that's the way. If you watch my video titled Pushing versus Pulling Playing, you may clearly feel the difference between controlling playing that pushes audience away and receiving, allowing playing that pulls your audience back to you. So such playing gives a great idea of um, the state of openness and receiving. Uh, in this state, you find yourself not being able to control anything. It's almost like you lying down on your back in the ocean, giving yourself up to something much bigger and powerful. And in this state, all the creativity comes to you, because you don't talk anymore. You don't push. You're listening. You're listening to life. You're listening to your feelings, you're listening to your heart, you're watching God. And by the way, this is a state where we need to be every moment of our life. <laughs> when we um, don't close our heart, but open it up, allowing to receive uh, everything that comes to us. And that will um, give us the sensation that we kind of live with exhalation, not with constant inha inhaling when we're trying to control everything and being so tense, but with constant exhalation. And that releases tension in our body. Quite often, we might find ourselves being so anxious and tense and even scared of simple situations in our life. But what happens is those simple situations trigger our old and deep wounds. The anger that was suppressed so many times for so long within the course of our life. So if we just tune into that tense feeling, and let the anger out through yelling inside, through protesting, crying, that will release that feeling and we will right away feel much, much easier. So I'm not an expert at this, guys, please remember, but I just want to try to give you a certain part and certain exercise that might guide you through this process. 
and um, hopefully if you're doing it enough I know it might take some months to eventually accomplish this but if you at least try to do this every day you're gonna be on the right direction so the first thing to do is be in the state of openness receiving softness kindness and gentleness just like a flower and again um, this idea of lying down in the ocean on your back it's a very good um, analogy second thing is detach yourself from your feelings scan and just look at your feelings from a side like you would look at the score noticing um, all the minors and dissonances in music but knowing that those belong to music those do not identify you that will bring you to a non-judgmental state and please don't try to figure out am i supposed to feel this way why am i feeling this way what the reason it's not about it um, as I said, it could be just um, those past wounds that was triggered with some simple situation, with a simple current situation. But just feel it. Just stop thinking. Pretend that you don't know how to speak, you never learn any language. <laughs> All you know is how to make some sounds. <laughs> you don't know how to speak. Stop thinking. Just feel. Third step is uh, observe and uh, observe those uh, sensation of energy, letting all those frozen and dry and suppressed feelings be alive again. Watch them leaving. It could be a desperate anger with shouting no. It could be a heaviness of grief with heavy cry um, it might be a natural beautiful flow of sadness it could be coldness frozenness of fear just experience all of this and in the end try to come back to softness and gentleness um, with a state when you're completely open, uh, receiving everything from life. Like I said before, I really like this expression, just listening and watching God. Allowance is love. It's unconditional love. Unconditional love is allowance. <laughs> allowance is a great power of creator to create. And controlling, suppressing, pushing, trying is not love. It's a great source of self-hater and real pain. Always remember, we cannot um, create happiness as a layer to cover up the hell that is beneath it. It's impossible. We would only feel that we're trapped. What we need to do is release those suppressed feelings and that will unblock the natural flow of life. Happiness is not something that we need to create. Happiness is a natural, our natural state, of our natural being. <laughs> it's like by default. <laughs> but, um, you know, if blue sky and beautiful sun of joyful being are covered with gray clouds of anger, all we need to do is to let the storm begin with lightnings, with thunder, with heavy rain, with cold wind <laughs> and after that the sky will be cleared up and we can see the sun again. <laughs> so this is it and I hope that was not too much <laughs> but I had to talk about this at some point <laughs> Oh, I hope I hope it was really helpful. So see you in my next video. Bye bye.